What's going on YouTube? Joshua Wade here and today we are going to take a look at how to export stems or track outs rather from Easy Drummer 3 inside of PreSonus's Studio One. Now this is version 5, uh, the latest version at the time of recording this video. So without further delay, let's go ahead and hop into it. I'm going to go ahead and open my Easy Drummer and as you can see I've got the Easy Drummer 3 main room and the original mix so I haven't changed anything just yet. But I'm going to go ahead and play this uh, basic mix MIDI beat that come from Easy Drummer. And I chose this one specifically because it had a few toms on it and I want to be able to show you that in the track outs or stems as most people call them stems. These are actually track outs because stems would be like say the kick, the snare, the toms would be on one stereo track or the toms would be on one and then the kick and the snare on another. Those are technically stems so this is going to be a track out. This is going to give you a little more control over things. You're going to have the kick in out as I'm about to show you here shortly. So let's go ahead and open Easy Drummer and we're going to go and to the mixer view and you'll notice right here at the bottom every one of them is an out one two out one two this is the default setting for just a basic stereo track out so if i were to convert this into audio it would just be stereo audio so we don't want to do that so what we're going to do is we're going to go up to mixer and we're going to scroll down we're going to hit multi-channel so now that i've selected multi-channel you can see right here at the bottom the outs have changed uh, these two are one and two because this is a kick in kick out and then three and four five and six so on and so forth depending on what the drum group is so these toms are on their own individual see like this is nine ten nine ten nine ten nine ten you can change these because right now if i were to track this out all the toms would be on a stereo track and these the kick in and kick out would be on one. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. We're gonna leave out one and two, and then we'll change this to out three and four, because me personally, I like having my kick in on one track and a kick out on the other. And the same goes for the snare top, snare bottom. So we're gonna change this to a five, six, and change this to a seven, eight. I'm not gonna go through every single drum because that's kind of why they do this. You can customize it the way that you wanna do it. So I'm just gonna focus more so up to the toms here. So we're gonna go seven, eight, seven, eight. Let's see here, okay, nine, 10. And I will show you why this is really cool here in a second. Let me see here, 13, 14, and 14, 15, 15, 16. Let's see here, 17, 18, where are you at? There you are. And then I'm just gonna do this tom also. So we're gonna go 19, 20. And basically all of these Whenever I hit play on this, you're gonna see something a little weird happen. So you only hear the kick drum because kick is still on out one and two. Like all of the other drums were set to out one and two, and that's why you would only get a stereo image out of all the drums. But now we have our each individual outs all the way up to floor tom two. And I'll show you how you can engage each track. We're gonna go down here to mix, then we're going to just click Easy Drummer one time. And now you see all of these, and this is where it's, it's very similar to how it used to be. So we're going to go all the way up to 1920, and I'm going to go ahead and activate these. And you see these little tracks populate right here in the mixer view. I'm going to go ahead and play this. And you can see your able to control the individual volumes of these, but this is not the fun part, right? I wanna be able to get the stems or track outs over here. So where it's changed a little bit in Studio One for the better, I think I love this option because it used to be so much more uh, difficult to get the track outs. So we're gonna go up to Song and then we're gonna go to Export Stems and you're about to see something a little bit different. Now here, if your default is set to tracks, you're only gonna see the Easy Drummer 3 track. Go to Channels and then just go ahead and select whichever ones you want to bounce out. So we've got Easy Drummer. Remember Easy Drummer 1, 2 is your first kick, your second kick, your snare top, snare bottom, so on and so forth. You're gonna to wanna to rename these after you track them out because unfortunately right now they won't give you the option to name them beforehand. So the settings that I always go for is whatever your sample rate, your session is, in this case I'm at 48K. I always go to 32-bit, I always go to wave. And then you'll see, I went ahead and I set the start marker and the end marker. And just pretend this is a whole song, right? And you've got your end marker and your start marker and you wanna bounce the whole track out for the drums. Just set between start and end marker. And then these settings might be a little bit different for you, 
but I've set mine up this way. So if you want to kind of copy me, that's fine. Um, I go hit import track, close after export, and then just hit OK. And here are your, your track outs. Here are your stems. The one thing I want to tell you is depending on what mixer you use, what mixer setting, let me go ahead and pull that up, what mixer setting you use right here. I've got the original mix, but this, these are going to change and you'll get different features down here. You can even go as far as to custom make yourself one and you'll have a little more control over what you can do, uh, which I, I'm probably going to do that because I really like the new Easy Drummer 3, but I'm gonna go ahead and mute this and play them back for you. Okay, so you can see this one's blank right here. So what happened with that is this particular MIDI loop just didn't play anything right there. And remember to mute this after you bounce these out because you'll get a double thing going on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna delete this track. And then I'm gonna solo this one and see what we have here. Sounds like a room mic. And again, those could just be, it could be a room mic or it could be toms, depends on what mixer, what mix setting you set. Yeah, that's a room mic, or yeah, that's a overheads maybe, and this looks like a tom. It's just so cool that it gives you that kind of, you know, flexibility on your mix and stuff like that, and you can treat it more like a real drum set. I always do this after I'm done writing a MIDI part, and what I'll do inside of Studio One is I will leave it muted. I'll just right click it, and I'll just hit deactivate or disable track, and then I'll just hide it. And if there you go, there's your drums. So if you ever want to see your hidden tracks, if you have hidden tracks, just go over here and you'll see right here this little dot. You can always bring it back and reactivate it. But what this does is once your tracks are done and your easy drummer is deactivated, it saves you on CPU. So that's always, you know, a, a perk of deactivating your tracks when you don't need them. Well guys, that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully you got something out of it and it did help you. If you are into this type of content, continued support is greatly appreciated. So just go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up. And remember, it's called music theory, not music fact. Have a good one.